G'day guys and gal, Matt Ward was responsible for many an abomination, from one of the worst send-offs a fantasy setting has ever gotten, to insulting every 40k fan who didn't play Ultramarines. Matt Ward has fumbled the bag on numerous occasions. However, it wasn't all bad. There were flashes of genius amidst the madness, with his creation of Trezin the Infinite being one of the greatest things in the entire setting of 40k. Trezin a wildly resourceful meme lord who has made it his eternal life's work to collect and catalogue everything in the galaxy in order to display it in his museum, a museum the size of a planet. In it is all manner of insane things, things that if they escape the museum could genuinely alter the very fabric of destiny and reality. Today we'll be going over what Trezin has in his museum. I'll be focusing on all the interesting shit instead of like the trillion different species of beetle he has because yeah I don't have to explain that one it's pretty fucking obvious. I'll explain what he has, why it's a big deal he's got it, and how he may have acquired it. Let's get into it. Trezin is a bit of a rare unit. He awoke from the Necron's long coma a lot earlier than most of his kin, and unlike the others who awoke with him, he had his entire consciousness and will intact. Hence, while the other Necron dynasties were sleeping, he continued his work in collecting specimens of everything in the galaxy to store and display on his tomb world of Solomons. I say continued because he has been doing this since he was still a flesh and blood Necron tier. To support that statement, the first thing I want to talk about in his museum is a Krork. The war in heaven was fucking wild. Gods manifested on the battlefield, entire systems were wiped out, and the carnage was so great that it turned the warp from a calm and pleasant afterlife into a literal hell. Hence everything that fought in the war in heaven was also overpowered as shit. The Kroks were the frontline muscle and warriors of the old ones. The ancestors of modern day orcs, these beasts were intelligent and significantly larger and stronger than even a Primarch. During the War of the Beast, where the Orcs randomly got super powerful and nearly destroyed the Imperium, the Beasts, the Prime Orcs, were so powerful that their effect on the Orc War increased the intelligence and size of all Orcs in the galaxy. These Beasts were considered to be mere demi crocs so imagine how powerful a true Krok would be. Trezin captured his specimen during the War in Heaven and he proudly displays it. If it ever got out, then the Orcs might genuinely become the top dogs of the galaxy. In a similar vein to the Krok, Trezin also has an ancient cane Knight Elder Warrior from the War in Heaven as well. The Elder back then were incredibly powerful. Even the best current psychers in the galaxy right now would barely match the psychic might of a low level Elder from the War in Heaven. These ancient Elder Warriors were able to go toe to toe with Krorks and elite Necrons, likely due to their speed and accurate foresight. So if one of them got out, they would be like the Elder Messiah, Elder Jesus, who would come to save them from Slaanesh. It's funny to think how Drazin probably has thousands of potential heroes in his gallery, individuals who could save their species if Drazin didn't have them locked in a stasis field. Drazin has a number of extinct things in his gallery, including a Thunder Warrior. The Thunder Warriors were the prototype for the Space Marines. Bigger and stronger than Astartes, these hulks suffered from degenerative brain cancers, meaning their lives were short and they got more insane and less reliable as time went on. They also weren't very tactical and they made the Imperium look kind of bad. What can I say? An army of big ass cancer patients probably aren't the best face for the Emperor's galactic marketing campaign. As such, the Emperor got his custodies to betray the Thunder Warriors and massacre them, eventually driving them extinct, except for this guy that Trezin stole. I assume he probably would have taken one of the survivors after the massacre as that's when they suddenly became rare and spicy. Speaking of Custodes, you bet your ass he has one as well. Custodes are powerful and difficult to capture, but not impossible. The Dark Elder have done it, so it's not surprising that Trezin was able to lock one down. He actually released the Custodian as well as numerous Horus Heresy era Ultramarines during the fall of Cadia in order to try help the Imperium, and it is assumed that they all died in that battle, but no biggie, still 9,999 other Custodes he can choose from. I just want to make a quick note about how Trezin actually captures his specimens. Most of the time, it'll just be a quick and cheeky kidnap job. Fly a stealth ship in, put the target in stasis, and then head out. But occasionally, Trezin gets creative, throwing a pokeball at them or tricking them into capturing themselves. He's a bit of a prick like that, to be honest. Drazin has numerous Astartes in his museum, with an official pauldron belonging to each and every chapter in the galaxy. That's right, Drazin has stolen from every single Space Marine chapter, no exceptions. He even tried to steer the Spear of Vulcan from the Salamanders, but that was a big no-no and he got his ass whooped. Drazin has guardsmen from every regiment, sisters of battle from every order, and anal beads from every porn star. Some sisters of battle he has were bodyguards to that dick Georges Van Dyer himself. 
This is when they were called the Brides of the Emperor and basically got gaslit into sucking some guy's dick for a century or two. The next exciting thing he has in his galleries is a perfect clone of the Primarch Fulgrim. See what I mean about heroes that could alter the course of the galaxy just sitting there gathering dust? Fabius Bio loves cloning shit. He fucking loves it and he's tried to clone various Primarchs with limited success. The issue was always the same, they lacked their Primarch special source, despite having the strength and intelligence of one. However, the Fulgrim clone had that special source. I have an entire video talking about this clone and why I believe he was perfect when all the others weren't, but Fabius nailed it. However, Fabius is a dickhead, and he traded the Fulgrim clone to Drazin in return for Emperor's children gene seed that Drazin stole from the Emperor 10,000 years earlier. I am hoping to see clone Fulgrim again because OG Fulgrim can suck a dick. Drazin has taken a dangerous interest in Tyranids, one point even capturing and displaying an entire Tyranid high fleet. However, Tyranids don't make for very good zoo animals, and they would often break out, fuck shit up, and ruin other exhibits, so Drazin had to delete them. He still holds onto a Hive Tyrant though, which could be one of the iterations of the Swarm Lord. Probably one of Trizin's favourite things to collect, however, is the Eldar, or shit that belongs to the Eldar. The Eldar and Necrons are ancient enemies and have fought in some capacity for over 60 million years. As such, Trizin gets a huge kick out of stealing important Eldar shit, especially considering how sentimental the Eldar are about their stuff. His collection has a solitaire in it, which is a big deal. Solitaires are surrounded by destiny. Their lives and deaths are known to impact billions of people. Trizin getting his hands on one is very impressive and is likely pissed off of Sia Gorach, the Eldar god of memes, as solitaires are his chosen warriors. Druzin also stole an Eldar gemstone that was the source of power for an Exodite world spirit because he thought it looked cool, despite the fact that him taking it doomed an entire Eldar civilization. To his credit, the gemstone ended up having the power to turn a Necron into a god temporarily, which came in pretty clutch, but Druzin didn't know that at the time, so very much a dick move. Druzin also has at least one Eldar Titan. He probably has one of every Titan from each race. I mean, it's already been confirmed that he has an Orc Gargant, and if he can put a Tyranid High Fleet in a Pokeball, then he can definitely put an Imperial Titan in one as well. Now let's go over some of the very random niche shit he has, such as a Squat. Squats are a race of space dwarves that have been going in and out of canon for the last 20 years or so. It's only recently that GW has said, fuck it, space midgets are back on the menu, and officially made them canon. Unfortunately for the Squats, when GW originally made them no longer canon, they did so by basically implying that their entire race was eaten by some random Tyranid high fleet, so there are very, very few Squats still alive one of whom resides in Trizin's collection. Trizin also has an Enslaver, which is this evil fucked up warp entity that can possess and consume the minds of sentient people, most notably the Eldar. When the war in heaven ended, a shitload of Enslavers came from the warp and they caused huge amounts of damage. It's not actually clear how the Enslaver plague ended, but for Trizin to have one is a big deal. They are like literally nowhere else. The Enslavers nearly wiped out all life in the galaxy. Another random one is Lord Castellan Creed, the commander of Cadia until it got blown up. Lord Creed was mortally wounded during the fall of Cadia, but instead of dying, Druzin popped in at the last second and he threw a master ball at him. To be fair, it's probably better that the legendary commander of Cadia is preserved in his museum rather than bleeds out on a dying world. Druzin used to have the legendary Inquisitor Greyfax in his collection, however he released her onto Cadia to help with the war effort. She actually survived Cadia and is now a trusted companion of Gilliman himself, proving herself 10 times over and Loki having deep sexual tension with Saint Celestine. Can't blame her, I probably would too. At this point, I may as well just make a video titled What Trezin Doesn't Have in His Galleries with how much of a hoarder this man is. By far, Trezin's most prized exhibit, which also doubles as his Tomb World's battery, is a Catan shard belonging to the Deceiver. Catans are beams of immense energy and power, so Trezin using one as a battery isn't a new or spicy thing to do. Necrons have been doing it for a while now, like the fucking Silent King has a shard powering his dais. Trezin was able to catch this Pokemon after a legendary battle with it, in which Trezin took a Gene Stealer Cult, a Guardsman Artillery Squad, and an Exodite War Party from his gallery, and he used them as the Pokemon that they were destined to be. He wasn't actually expecting to encounter a Catan Shard, hence why he didn't bring shit like the Solitaire or, you know, the fucking Croak. After beating the Catan Shard, which was actually made up of six shards, hence it was a Transcendent Shard, he locked away five of the shards and he secretly kept one for himself. He now feeds it micro shards in order to get it to tell him the galaxy's secrets while it powers his entire planet. Drazin doesn't just have people or entities in his museum. He's a huge sucker for ancient Necron tier artifacts, the shit his people made before they became Necrons and they lost the ability to invent or innovate. Basic stuff like Necron tier pottery is gold to Drazin. He would swap a Titan Legion 
if it meant that he could get a full set of Necron tier cutlery. Druzin has also acquired various powerful Necron artifacts that he displays or uses in times of need. Stuff like his Obliterator Staff, which allows him to hold his own against a Catan Shard, or a cloak that gives him minor time warping abilities. He was planning on returning the cloak to the Necrons he stole it from, I mean borrowed it from, eventually, but it was destroyed in the battle against the Catan Shards, so yeah, whoops. The galleries of Solomons are awesome, and it's fun to see that GW gives zero fucks about what they're willing to put in there. A story based around Trezin having one of the crone swords and the Inari basically trying to pull off a hectic heist would be a very fun read. Who knows, maybe that ancient canine warrior will get loose and beat Slanesh's ass to death. A man can dream. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of naughty exclusive picks that not even Trezin has gotten his hands on. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more hoardy content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.